What is good? We're back. We got our boy Austin Abbott, two B's, two T's, and two F's back in the house. Mainstay with the boys at this point. It's uh, the, 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 new, the new tandem ready to get after it. Today we're going to hit a nice little 23 redraft Superflex tight end premium. Going to go through two rounds here. Eh, throw them throw them back to see equate them to maybe a little bit of the 24 rookie see how we're feeling who we might take over who uh but just a fun little exercise like i said we're in the doldrums of of can the draft get here fast enough uh so just trying to switch it up do different things talk about different guys in different ways so awesome man how's it going what's good man i'm excited we are two weeks away officially as of right now from the nfl draft but we're actually going to go back we're going to talk about the 23 draft see how we would you know redraft what we know now what would we do so would bryce young still be the 101 i don't know (laughs) (laughs) i don't know man to put it politely but uh, let's get into it man this this is gonna be fun yeah let's do it ready to roll (laughs) All right, Austin, you got you had first pick. We're going to just go back and forth here and then we'll we'll take some breaks to uh, discuss a little bit and then maybe throw some 2024 guys of what, who, you know, who would we rather? So with the first pick of the 2023 uh, time machine draft here, who, who you got? Yeah, we're taking Will Levis here. Um, <laughs> we're going CJ Stroud, locking it in. It's not a question for me. CJ Stroud is absolutely the 101 I mean, yeah. 23 touchdowns this year, which kind of surprised me. You would have thought it was a little bit more than that, right? Because he was a rookie. Really, he, he was really, really good. Uh, you know, the tape was phenomenal. He he was just everything that you would hope for out of the second overall pick. Everything that you would hope for that your franchise QB, you know, would perform in their first year, man. And I see people, I don't want to get off track, Casey, but I see people already talking about like, oh, will Caleb Williams throw for like 30 touchdowns his rookie year? It's like, dude, like. <laughs> It, CJ Stroud 20, just lit the world on fire. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Set the world on fire. You're right with 23 touchdowns. Like, man, I think Andrew Luck was right there, too. Like, it's his first year. CJ Stroud was so, so good. Yeah. So, uh, I'm, and now, man, with Joe Mixon, with uh, Tank Dell, you know, Nico Collins, Stephon Diggs. Diggs. Holy cow. Yeah, Schultz, holy yeah. cow, man. So, love, love CJ Stroud here at the 101. What about you, Casey? Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. Would I think that's who you got to take at the 101? Would you? No, no chance you're taking Caleb over Stroud, right? CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud. CJ Stroud. All right. So I'm gonna go pick two. I'm gonna go Anthony Richardson here. I think that's locked and loaded for me. Now, obviously, you know he missed a little bit of time. Again, we're talking super flex tight end premium 1.5 uh, for the for the premium. Missed some time, but and, and a little bit of of Richardson that you saw, he was lighting it on fire. Um, it wouldn't be surprising to me if Anthony Richardson complete the season and be in the top five or six of fantasy quarterbacks. Um, even basically having this rookie year, like the legs, the arm, the things he can do were so much fun. He could amass so many points so quickly. Um, and maybe maybe at this time next year when we're redrafting it again, maybe Anthony Richardson's uh, the un, unquestioned one in this class uh, because of the legs. Uh, would you would you take Richardson or Caleb Williams? See, that's a real question. I think it's yeah. really close. And I think most people are going to take Caleb. Uh, I believe they're neck and neck in my rankings. Um, it's it, for me. It's more of like flip a coin. Whoever you prefer, I'm okay with it. I think that Caleb. I would use the word safer. I think yeah. that's appropriate, right? That, right? That's how I feel. Um, like, you know, Richardson, who was a top four quarterback in two out of the four <laughs> games he played in. I yeah. mean, like, I, a really small sample size. I get it. But, right. you know, we already we saw that upside. So uh, I, I like it, Casey. I, w- I would have taken a rich at the 102. Yeah. We have Richardson and Caleb Williams. Uh, Richardson coming in at the 110, Williams coming in at the 112 in the FFD ADP okay. mm-hmm. post combine ADP. That is, um, so yeah, they're neck and neck. I think I think you hit the nail on the head. Williams probably safer, going to be insulated value for even longer if Richardson comes out gets hurt again for a little while, or you know pe- the chuckleheads start talking him because he's turning it over or doing something bad, and basically his rookie year, Anthony or Caleb Williams, you know more a little more insulated value there so i I, i'd say 
Um, probably a coin flip for me. I probably lean Caleb, but I, actually, I probably lean Anthony Richardson. Fuck it. Um, a-, a Rich is eight for me. Caleb is nine. Yeah. So. Yeah. All right. Uh, how about pick three? Who you got? Bijan Robinson. And this was tough because yeah. I was, you know, I don't, I don't want to spoil anything, but you know, the, the other running back that we're going to talk about shortly, uh, he, he was right there with him and Jameer Gibbs, but I, I would still go Bijan Robinson. Uh, you know, Arthur Smith out of town. I think, I think at this point, you know, he's, he's going to have, you know, a very, very good career, obviously, but I'm, I'm anticipating him having like a top five running back season next year. Agreed. You know, he could be RB three. He could be, he could be RB one. Nobody, nobody would be surprised. Right. Nobody. Side. So, uh, but uh, again, I used the word safe before I'm going to use it again. I feel very, very safe with Bijan Robinson here at the one Oh three. Yeah, I can't. I, I, that's, that's who I would have taken. I agree a hundred percent, uh, in, in the world of that we live in of, of wide receiver, wide receiver, wide receiver. I'm still very much taking Bijan. There is more what more than one way to skin a cat. Mm-hmm. Um, and Bijan is somebody who I'm very interested in having on my team. Now Gibbs is, is fun and sexy, but I, I, I just, I feel like, and has proven that he can, he can do it at a high level and be very explosive. Doesn't need a whole lot of touches necessarily to be great. Uh, but at the end of the day, he does have to deal with a little bit of Montgomery and, and, and a good team setting around him. Um, so no, no hate on Gibbs, but Bijan's firmly got to be planted ahead of him for me right now. And I know it wasn't, you didn't get the same season out of Bijan year one as you did, but it was two teams going in two totally different directions. Uh, one has a quarterback, one did not. One had a competent head coach and offensive coordinator, one did not. Um, so I agree with you. I think Bijan, big bounce back here coming, and, and I would absolutely take him here. So pick four on to me. I flipped a coin between Gibbs and Puka. I took Puka. It's the wide receiver. That one's for the people there. They're, they're going to be rejoicing because we took the took the wide receiver, and that's what, that's what the kids these days do. Uh, they just take wide receivers. Um, and Puka came out and was it was a rookie and posted you know damn near 18 points per game. Uh, I don't think Cooper Cup's uh, returning to Cooper Cup form anytime soon. Not that he's gonna be dust, but I think this is uh, I don't I don't think that was a a one off from Puka here. I think Puka is gonna be the guy that dominates most games. Mm-hmm. Um, the ceiling is is so good for him, uh, and and I think the value is gonna stay really strong with him because I, like I said, the kids the kids love the wide receivers these days. Uh, so I, I I leaned slightly into that and went went Puka there. I and I mean I know I mentioned again I know I mentioned Jameer Gibbs right it, it was a tough decision for me uh, with with my pick but Puka was also you know right there neck and neck they're all in the same tier man it's not like I have any of these players significantly ahead of you know one another right the 2023 class like the top of it was gold mm. like really really good. Uh, Puka just had the you know the goat rookie season, did he not? Oh, <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. You know, most receptions, most yards, uh, most targets. He beat out Anquan Bolden by one, I believe. Anquan Bolden also played one less game. Right, right? that was sixteen game season. Right, for what it's worth. Got to caveat all these damn records yeah. now because <laughs> I greed, know. damn it, uh, greed. So I'm sitting here at the one hundred and four. Jameer Gibbs is my pick, right? Very, very. This was pretty easy. Mm-hmm. Uh, Casey, this is tight end premium. So, yes, there's another guy that did come to mind. I'll let you talk about him in a minute. But, but Jameer Gibbs, I mean, he was everything that you wanted, you know, throughout his rookie campaign, right? 22 years old, 5'9, 200 pounds, right? People, you know, coming from king size, it's a little, little worried. I'm not going to lie. A year ago, I was I was mm-hmm. a little bit worried about his size, right? It, it crossed my mind. Mm-hmm. I'm not I'm not going to lie to you guys, <laughs> but I, uh, I you know I trusted the talent, and I, I I was confident that that Jameer Gibbs would have a successful career, and you know he finished as RB ten while still missing multiple games, right? You know, and now I would argue he's going to be uh, you know not going to healthier this upcoming season, get a larger workload. Uh, I would imagine Monty's going to have less of a workload. Uh, I just I think that Gibbs is just going to be utilized more, and uh, you know he he proved that he was a true weapon, not just a running back, but a weapon for Detroit this year. Yeah, no, that's that's who you have to absolutely go with there. That's that's the pick. I think after this one, it starts to get a little interesting, but I think mm-hmm. there's probably one more in tight end premium that that, that kind of you know is I think fairly easy, and it was at the one five. 
um, taking taking Laporta there, or uh, yeah, the one six rather. Sorry, um, taking Laporta there. Um, you know, I, I I don't I don't I'm not the guy who's coming out and cementing Laporta as the dynasty tight end one um, per se. But I think in this just in this scenario with these guys around. I'm fine with taking him there. A lot of people have him there. I, I probably don't. I mean, I think, I think you can make a case for a couple of guys there, Trey McBride being one of them. Um, Mark Andrews, hell, even even maybe even coming back for that crown. Um, you know, Hawkinson could certainly work his way back up to there. But Laporta, I don't think you can go wrong there. The value's good. Uh, the, the people like him, and the play was, you know, pretty outstanding uh, for, for a rookie. Um, you know, maybe you, you worry a little bit about if, if – you know, you can get Gibbs going a little more. Maybe you get Jamison Williams going a little bit more. Um, you know, can you do they add the third wide receiver at all anywhere in there um, to to kind of get that that uh, that going a little bit? But you know, I, I, Laporte is I think the easy pick here at at one hundred and six. So I didn't I didn't put too much thought into that one and and just grab grab my guy there. It was the right pick, Casey. There's, yeah. there's no question about it. And now at the 107, I'm on the clock. Yeah, this is where there's a real tear cap. Yeah, okay? I, yeah, I would I would tend to agree. Mm-hmm. And and I'm taking Rashi Rice here. I'm hoping that we're I'm hoping for a relatively short type of suspension, four games. Hopefully, hopefully it's what whatever it is, man. We we play dynasty. If if it's four, if it's six. It's okay, right? Redraft, totally different story. But Rashi Rice here at the 107. Oh, God, Rashi, man. And now we're talking, what, what was he, Casey? Like around the 2-5, maybe 2-3, two, 2-4, two, 2-5 two, last year? Yeah. Is, would yeah. you say that's correct? Pretty close yeah. to that. I mean, for in, in, especially as we got later into the into the cycle. Uh, yes, definitely around mm-hmm. in there. S- second round pick in the NFL draft. Uh, second round pick in you know dynasty rookie drafts. And here I'm taking him at the 107. He was a case. I mentioned this on the previous pod. I'm going to say this stat again, man. Rashi Rice was first in percentage of targets caught, 80.2 percent. So Patrick Mahomes and Rashi Rice had great chemistry right out of the gate. His A dot very very low. So it does make sense, right? That was the way that they utilized him in this Kansas City offense. And, uh, you know, it wasn't until week 14 where Rashi Rice finally played 70% of snaps or more. So, you know, Andy Reid did baby him, but it, hey, man, they won a Super Bowl. I guess he knew what he was doing. It worked out just fine. I uh, would have liked to see him utilized more frequent, you know, earlier in his career. But uh, he also ranked second in target accuracy, third in target separation, and seventh in fantasy points per route run. To do that mm. in your rookie campaign, you know, Really, really good stuff. So Rashi Rice at the 107. Yeah, Casey, I mean, I, I, I can't, I can't really argue with that. Um, I, I do want to. We'll wait until we get to finish out the first round, but I want to go back and, and ask some questions mm-hmm. about the 24 guys. But we'll keep it moving here for a second. Rashi Rice there. So, um, like you said, I think this is where it gets interesting. Um, you know, if I took JSN here or if anybody took JSN as the next guy, I think people would complain about take lock or whatever. I, I'm not ready to, to throw uh, the profile of JSN away in the trash. And like dude had 60 some catches in his rookie year, uh, which I, I don't even think a lot of people even realize, um, you know, they, yeah, they restructured Lockett to bring him back, but you know, is that so they can even get rid of him in an even shorter amount of time, potentially, uh, I, I think with this new offense and new regime, you're going to see Lockett be used a little different, or uh, JSN rather, be used a little <laughs> differently, get him outside a little more, which he, his, his numbers, if you go look at it, were, were pretty strong on the outside. He just had a weird start, injury. Um, so I could have taken JSN here. I, I gave, gave him his flowers here, but I'm going to go take, I'm going to take Zay Flowers, who, who started uh, decent, had a you know little lull in the middle and then finished pretty strong. Uh, I think as things go, this Monk and offense develops Zay, Zay and, and Lamar build a rapport. Um, you, you just saw how electric he can be, um, and you're not necessarily waiting a year. I think if we do this again next year, I think JSN could certainly be, you know, mounting a, a strong comeback here. Um, and, and I'm glad, you know, foreshadowing that we didn't let him fall too far here, but I, I I went out on a limb here a little bit, took flowers. A-chan was in the mix here. JSN certainly in the mix here. Um, I think we got a, I kind of have a little bit of a, of, of a tier here where I, I'm not, I'm, I'm a little indifferent on, on the guys for the next few picks here. I, I, I mean, shit, even, 
almost down to 112. I I view all these guys semi similarly that I'd, I'd interchange, you know, a lot of them without much value difference. And, and I, I would tend to agree that I'm okay with putting rice as, as maybe the leader at this point. So don't hate that. Maybe if Diggs wasn't there for a year, maybe tank Dell could have snuck up here and been mm -hmm. over flowers for me, but you know, we're going to take a year off flowers just doesn't have that competition. Now maybe the Ravens will drop, you know, draft somebody. Um, but, I'll give Flowers the uh, the nod there, being there a year, working some stuff out. Seems like he's a, the type of player who, as him and Lamar get further and further on the same page, the ad-libbing that could go on with those two and, and kind of the way Zay and, and Lamar operate, it seems like those two, that would be a very, very good match um, with with them. So I took Flowers there. Um, who you got next? Uh, or, or did you have any comments on that, Austin? Oh, I mean, uh, I agree with what you said, Casey. I, you know, we're we're in a different tier now, and and these players from 107 to maybe 112 kind of feels like you know they're all neck and neck. Like you could interchange them, and I don't really think I would have a problem, right? They're they're close. Mm -hmm. There's an argument to be made. So I'm here now at the 109, and I'm taking Jordan Addison, man. Oh boy, here's what I'll say about Jordan Addison, Casey. I got a lot to say about Addison. Uh, <laughs> I feel like. I feel like is he a buy right now? Did people forget? Did, did I you think people are just well with, on with, to the with next the, thing? You got no quarterback. You know, people just you know, and and we we I don't want to talk out of both sides of my mouth. You worry about uh, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, but I I I do get sick of that conversation of yeah, but who's who's everything can change so fast um, that Jordan Addison I think is is probably a little bit of a buy. I think people. Or just think that it was just kind of a one-off and are disrespecting what he did in his rookie year a little bit. Yeah, it's like the fade has gone too far, man. And I don't think anyone's talking about it. And for the record, Jordan Addison scored more fantasy points than the following wide receivers during their rookie campaign. Tyree Kill, C.D. Lamb, A.J. Brown, Rashi Rice, Zay Flowers, Jackson Smith, and Jigwa. Right? Like, those are some big, you know, some top tier receivers, I would argue, you know, <laughs> that's, that's a pretty good list. And Jordan Addison outscored all of them throughout his rookie campaign. Uh, you know, Jordan Addison also keep in mind, man, he did this with backup quarterbacks, right? Nick Mullins, Jaron Hall, Josh Dobbs, Casey yeah. Myers, Austin. Abbott. Which should give I mean, you a, a little, even more confidence to say, yeah. I, what do we care if the, who the, you know, obviously Jefferson was missing time, but like did it with, with backups. I love that. Yeah. And he was a first rounder, of course, right? They prioritized a 23rd overall pick on Jordan Addison. Uh, he won the Boltnikoff. You know, he, it, that was back in 2021 uh, at the University of Pittsburgh. He put up 100 receptions, just under 1,600 yards and 17 touchdowns in 14 games. And then he goes out, you know, his rookie year, man, 70 catches, 911 yards, 10 touchdowns. And like, ah, man, I, I, I'm, I'm just going to stop yapping about him. I, I could go on for a while. But Jordan Addison here at the 109, if it feels like a value, I'm, I'm happy with that pick. Yeah, no, I'm, I, I, I can't fight you too much, man. I, I like, I like the pick with Addison there. Uh, like you said, disrespected probably a little bit, and you know, played with some backups. Obviously, again, like I said, without Jefferson, but you know, had had some really, really, really solid games. And I, I do, and I think, I mean, even if you can just get a decent quarterback play, I think. What we've kind of what I've said all, you know, I think he's he needs to be a two in an offense. And I think he's 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 going to flourish with Jefferson. And, and, and if he could just get a decent quarterback in there, I don't think Jefferson being back for the whole season would would hurt Jordan Addison, because I think he's just naturally going to be a really strong two. Did did you realize Addison? This blew my mind. He was top five in total touchdowns. He had, mm -hmm. he had 10. Like I, when yeah. I think about, you know, the most touchdowns scored this and season. That's probably, that's probably why some people are a touchdown regression. Mm -hmm. um, you right. know, probably why right. people are hating, but you know, I, I think the touchdowns help helped him be, you know, fantasy relevant, but I think you're just scratching the surface. Like he was getting open to score those touchdowns. So he was also seventh in total routes, total route wins mm -hmm. uh, and 12th in routes run. So like Love he that. was on the field so often and he was clearly winning, but yeah. uh, Casey, who, who you got at the one ten? All right. So I, just like at flowers, same guys I was assigning against, it came down to H and, and JSN and tank Dell here. Um, and I did push JSN back, uh, you know, one more hoping he'd, he'd make it to me 
at the 12 spot when I was picking again. I went A-Chan uh, just with with the huge, huge upside play. And I could argue that huge, huge upside play for JSN. But, you know, it, it'd be a little harder for the upside to really, really blow out. I think you could JSN could recover his value by showing how good he is. Uh, and reminding everybody, but Achan has been on the field, has the opportunities in an, in an electric offense, um, and, and Raheem Mostert's 31, 32 years old, um, and we've we've seen the ridiculous upside games, the 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 week winning games from Achan, so I, I I had to had to grab him here. I, I probably considered him strongly at the one hundred seven, the the one hundred nine. So would you take him here at the one ten, like? I don't have a problem. I think it's a value, right? You know, he's, uh, he's someone that I, I'll, let me use the word safe again, Casey. I, I don't, I don't feel safe with H. No, no. And right? I think that's why he slid back here a little bit because the upside's there, but it's not safe. Mm-hmm. Right. The consistency, we don't know, man, but that, you know, that's, those are the type of players that can help you win leagues, mm-hmm. right? If they hit, if they're right on that, you know, on that right week, you, you better look out, man, because, you know, what did A-Chan score? It was over 50 fantasy points yeah. in his first full game. It was like his second career game. Yeah. So, I mean, we saw it right out of the gate. But uh, crazy. I'm back on the clock. I have JSN here at the 111. Wow, man. Crazy. Crazy what happens in one year. I'm mm-hmm. sitting here with 111. JSN is still there. I mean, what was he going, Casey? 104? 103? What was it? You know, it, probably, it, you know. 104 i think by the time everything shook out it was probably you know richardson uh bryce or stroud uh, Bijan, gibbs yeah. and then usually jsn you know somewhere around in there yeah so and you know receivers hold their value very well and not that he had a bad rookie campaign mm-hmm. but people are frustrated they weren't happy right they wanted to see oh. you know of course they weren't anticipating this type of Poka Nikoa or mm, sure. uh, Justin Jefferson rookie rookie type of year, but they still probably wanted to see like you know nine hundred yards and like eighty catches. Like it's just it's not reality for ninety percent of rookie wide receivers or more. You know it doesn't happen. So, uh, but he still had perfectly fine numbers, right? Like he he man he produced. Um, I guess I would have liked to see him produce even more, but it was tough. Like when you consider all the variables that come into play. You got Geno Smith, who I'm not a huge fan of, to put it politely, very low on Geno Smith. Mm -hmm. You got DK Metcalf. You got Tyler Lockett, you know, and you also they added Charbs. They had Ken Walker, right? There were just a a lot of mouths to feed. And, you know, it just Seattle still succeeded. It's just uh, they succeed in a lot of ways. Right. I'll I'll kind of leave it at that. Uh, Seattle is a unique football team, a unique offense. Um so, you know, they added Sam Howell. We'll see what happens. Uh, do you think, Casey, do you think that Sam Howell could win the starting role over Geno Smith sometime, you know, sometime this season? I, I don't think so. I think, I think, I think, no? Gino's, no, really? I think, I think Geno's much more of a pro at this point than, than, than Sam. We'll, okay. we'll see. We'll see. We got a new regime. Uh, they're, yep. they're, we'll see how they play it. Um, I could see them drafting, also drafting another quarterback, but I like yes. to play. Uh, I like the play from them bringing in Sam. Uh, gives them options um, to have a competition, uh, to have a guy that they can develop, and have a backup that can you know score points and sling it around the yard if they need. Which I think is a growing trend that we've been seeing in the NFL. A lot, a lot of good quarterbacks that could develop and be backups going, uh, trading around, moving around. You know, in that Gardner Minshew vein. Um, he's Gardner's probably you know getting to the point where he's out of the you know I don't think you're going to develop him a ton more but he can give you that but you know you got guys like Mac Jones and Sam Howell and and Kenny Pickett being traded around a little bit who have had some starter experience can can get behind another veteran sit and potentially get another shot at some point or if somebody gets injured uh, somebody that has had good times in the NFL uh, at certain times so I, I view that a little bit more like that. Uh, but it would yeah. be, you know, would probably be good for the offense. But we'll we'll see what uh, Brandon Grubb uh, dials up. It's going to be, you know, a little more eleven personnel, a little more wide open. I think uh, from what we've been used to seeing from the Seahawks, a sneaky team that could really, really look to target a quarterback. I wouldn't surprise Seattle, me, man, if they, if they want to let Michael they, Penix stay in Washington and draft yeah. him. Yeah, Grubb's I, got a lot of experience with him. 
I would love to see it, man. I yeah. mean, Jackson Smith, the jig almost had a hundred targets, you know, over 60 catches over 600 yards last year. And now you add like a Michael Penix. I mean, I'm getting excited, man. Now I kind of want to go buy Jackson Smith and Jigba. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Casey, yeah. who you got at the 112? Yeah, I'll say one more thing on JSN. You know, I think everybody is is um, basically Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. They want their golden goose now, <laughs> Daddy. Uh, and, and if it doesn't happen, then they're off to the next thing. And, you know, they're going to drink the fuzzy lifting drink or I don't know. I think maybe Veruca goes down the, the goose shoot or something. I don't remember how she meets her fate in that movie but um so anyway uh jsn still still very much relevant for me and in play the next pick here i took uh tank dell this i think that's the next guy that's got to go that was an easy selection for me like i said he could have gone anywhere Mm -hmm. after laporta and i would have said sure um you know you get you get digs for a year but you know when tank dell was out there there is you know a lot of favorable stats even to nico um, and I'll be interested to see how they play him. I think he seems like he'll naturally kind of slide into the slot a little bit more. Him and Diggs can swip swap out of that slot, but it seems like Tank will be the slot guy. And that could really work out well for for Tank uh, gobbling up some volume. And of course, you know, we're usually playing full point PPR. Um, so that, that could be really good. Dell, Dell is an elite separator, an elite mover. And now, now you give him operation out of the slot where you're not putting a press on him. He has the option to go wherever he kind of wants to go. Um, and can get the ball in his hands. I, I, I think that's still going to be excellent. And if there's a little buy window of uh, somebody down on Dell for a year, I, I would I would pounce all over that. So uh, Tank Dell wrapping up one through twelve. And you know I want to go back real quick, do a lightning round of some comparisons to twenty four, and then we'll do a real quick uh, you know back half of this thing um, and just run run through the guys that we have just to see where we're at with the back half of of uh, you know two rounds here, but. Really, I think this puts in perspective. I mean, we just went through a bunch of guys that, you know, all of those guys produced outside of JSN, really. Um, but he even had some games where you could have plugged him in. They all produced at a really high level. They all helped your fantasy team this year. And and, the, and some of those guys were guys that you drafted even a little later. Um, and everybody wasn't sold on, you know, Flowers and Addison. You drafted in the first round in JSN, obviously, and HN. But, you know, you got potentially sometimes Laporta, you know, people weren't too in on by the time the cycle was, you know, near, near its end, you were getting Laporta, but you know, tank Dell, you know, really, really solid Rashi rice, really, really solid. Um, so, you know, I just, the same thing kind of happened. All this class sucks. And, you know, right now we just rattled off 12 guys who are currently all inside of, let's see here. Um, tank Dell was the last one that just went and Rashi rice is, Flowers, uh, JSN, all those guys are inside top six, 80 top, si- top six rounds of startup ADP in the, uh, uh, FFD ADP. So, I mean, even JSN having a bad year, staying inside that top, those top six rounds. I mean, that's what this draft just gave you, man. And, and I, I don't, I don't think, you know, any of these guys were just like, Oh man, I don't, I don't think that's going to happen again. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm very in on a lot of those guys still. Um, so I like that a lot. And I think there's even some more guys down here that are, that are pretty sexy and, and fun. Uh, but real quick, let's, let's go back. Let's go to Bijan, Bijan Robinson or, uh, Maserati Marv. I'm taking Marvin Harrison. Ah, I'm taking Bijan. Are you? Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I'll take the note. It's a that. question. I'll it's take a question. the note on that. How about Puka or Neighbors? I, you got, you got to go Puka. You have to. I, I love, I love Malik I Neighbors, but, but you got it right. I agree. I agree. I'm not crazy, am I? Maybe. No, I don't think so. I don't think so at all. Yeah, yeah you got, you got to take old. Uh, I, uh, you got to take Puka there. Um, uh, Gibbs or Neighbors? Now that. That's a good question. Um, oh man, why does my gut tell me I want to go Jameer Gibbs? I don't know. Um, I'll take Gibbs. I think I'm going to go Gibbs really, really close. Yeah, real real close. Uh, ADP has them two spots apart right now. How about Sam Laporta or Brock Bowers? <laughs> I mean, Casey. <laughs> so, I, no, I, I'm, I'm going to take Sam Laporta. Okay. He, he is... He is my tight end one. Um, I, I think Bowers is four. I could pull up my rankings right now. I think Bowers is four. Look, man, he's of course he's the better prospect. 
But guess what, man? Once you get into the NFL, none of that matters, right? right. Then it just comes down to what have you done for me lately? Just start producing. That's yeah. all that matters. And and Sam Laporta did that incredible rookie campaign. So it's it's Sam Laporta for me. All right. Would you take? Is there any of those? Uh, is there any of Rice, Flowers, Addison, H and JSN, Dell that you would? Um, not take or or would you take Roma Dunze or any of those guys? Oh, <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm taking Roma or everybody you yeah, said. I agree. Um, I you agree. said H and Dell, Rice, Flowers, Addison, H and JSN, and Dell. Yeah, uh, the closest one for me. Uh, I got Roma at wide receiver seventeen and uh, Rashi's wide receiver twenty two. That's probably the closest, man. I I'm bullish on Rome. I I think Rome. It's wheels up, man. I don't even care where he lands. Yeah, me neither. Me neither, baby. <laughs> um, how about how about how about uh, Roma Dunze or or Sam Laporta? Uh is this tight end premium? Sure. Sam Laporta, but uh, I'll it's, take uh, Rome. It's it's a question. Uh, it's it's definitely close. I think I, for me, I think I just want to lock up, in my opinion, the dynasty tight end one. Sure, sure. I'll take. I'm, I'm going to take Roma Dunze. Mm-hmm. Um, but I but I love Rome. How about uh? Let's see. Let's try to let's try to get some real quick. How about Brian Thomas or let's see here. Brian Thomas or Tank Dell. I have Brian Thomas ahead. Uh, oh man, am I too bullish on Brian Thomas Jr.? He's my dynasty wide receiver twenty one. Mm probably too bullish but i, w- I would prefer him so rashi, his, uh, or rashi or brian thomas uh rashi is literally the next spot he's 22 brian thomas jr's 21 man it's just maybe i'm i was just enamored by that 433 his six was he six three two oh nine i just I, I again another guy that i think he's gonna g- land in a, in a pretty solid spot and, and i liked what i saw from him this year man he led the nation in touchdown 17 like He's just so good at LSU. So uh, I, I, I am really, really high on Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, I would I would say he slots kind of right right in there with those guys right away. I'll probably take the known with those guys uh, over Brian Thomas. Pretty much all of those guys we talked about. Um, I'll, I'll take that. Um, are you higher on Worthy or Thomas are kind of the same? Would you take Worthy over any of those guys? Uh, I have Worthy at my wide receiver 34, man. Okay, I'm, so a little uh, lower. Yeah, lower. Okay. Definitely a tier below. Okay. All right, well let's keep it moving here. Let's 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 fly through these through the second round here and we'll we'll discuss uh a little bit as we go quickly. So uh you are back on the clock here. Picking off the second round, two one. Who you got? Yep. First pick in the second round. Bryce Young is still there. I still believe that he can have success in the NFL. I, I I'd be lying to you if I told you I wasn't at least a little bit worried about Bryce Young, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, the you know his rookie season was far from what we wanted to see. But man, when you look at the big picture, when you step back, you realize that holy cow, this franchise was com- com- a oh, complete yeah. mess, man, from top to bottom. Bryce Young was was thrown to the wolves, and he did have some success. It's just not nearly as much as you know we wanted to see. Sure, uh, he played in sixteen games. That's something I want to point out, right? That that's a very very solid. Solid start to his career, right? People, you know, king size us over here. But but I do like Bryce. <laughs> I like Bryce coming out. People were worried, you know, 5'10", 205. Like, oh, he's too small. He's going to get hurt. He's frail, blah, blah, blah. It's like, all right, well, he just played 16 games. So that right there, you know, it weighs a lot. You know, it's that's very valuable for me personally. Health, you know, always, always, you know, the best ability is always going to be availability, obviously. Sure. Um, he, you know, and and for, for, for Pete's sake, man, quarterback 23 it's not like he bombed and he was like qb 35 or 40 like yeah. it wasn't like a zach wilson kenny pickett type of rookie season it yeah. was you know he was still a, a qb2 uh you know it, 11 touchdowns 10 interceptions far from good but it's sure. okay right i i, I right. just and added deontay the, johnson right right who was surviving in that ecosystem not not Nobody. a whole lot you know so 202 uh yeah i took dalton kincaid here i, I would have probably taken him uh, he was in the mix for some of those back end of the first round picks. I'd probably still slide him above uh, Bryce Young there, but I'm very interested in buying some Bryce Young if I can get it for the right price. But I, I took Dalton Kincaid tight end premium. 
Um, you know, they're, they've, they've exited Diggs stage, right? They'll probably add another wide receiver, but he'll be a rookie. Um, you know, Kincaid will be the second year man going in there and, and showed some promise. So I wouldn't be surprised if Kincaid, um, is, is right up there in, in the mix of, you know, tight end two, three, four, uh, this year wouldn't surprise me at all. Uh, so going Dalton Kincaid there. How about, uh, two, three. So I landed Tajay Spears here at the two, three. Mm, Interessante. There were a few wide receivers, man. Uh, there are a few wide receivers that I liked right after him. Um, but I, I ended up going running back. Look, man, T- Tajay was was seventh in target share. He was ninth in targets, ninth in receptions, eleventh in receiving yards. Derrick Henry's gone. Yes, I know that they just brought in Tony Pollard. I, I get it, and that's always going to be the biggest knock on him. Sure. But the, the more that I think about it, I, I do think it's. I think Tajay Spears is the back that I prefer, uh, and and that might change, right? That might that might change. Like you know, we still have to have the NFL draft. We you know training camp. Like there's a lot more to come before the season begins. Uh, so I'm not like set in stone on Tajay being the one in Tennessee, but uh, I liked what I saw from him this this past year. Uh, you know, again, 22 years old. He was a day two pick. That. You know, that, that matters to me, right? A day two pick, I, they prioritize him. They drafted him early, uh, and he was wildly efficient. He was sixth in yards per touch, fifth in breakaway oh, sure. run rate, and fourth in juke rate. So, you know, that stuff matters to me. And, uh, you know, sure. here at the 2-3, I'm, I'm okay with taking a stab at Tajay Spears. Yeah, I mean, it, you thought that they would add somebody you didn't think would be as prolific as potentially mm-hmm. what Tony Pollard could be, but I don't, I don't hate it here. Um, I went Jaden Reed with the next pick, um, that, you know, I think I would most likely take Reed over Spears. I love Spears, big Spears proponent. I thought he was great. All those stats you pointed to are awesome. Uh, I think he'll probably be the one a and Pollard be the one B, but they, you know, they gave Pollard some decent money. Uh, but Jaden Reed, I think he'll be schemed up here and, and probably manufactured some touches, but you, you worry about the ecosystem, not in a bad way um, for the Packers, but you worry about that. There's, you know, so much to be involved, so many touches uh, to be had and then so many options uh, for, for, for Jordan love that, you know, Jaden Reed would can could potentially be on, on a little bit of a sell for me, but in this um, exercise, I would certainly uh, draft him and, and him and Spears really, really close there might lean Reed. Um, but anyway, uh, how about, two where are we at here two five yeah and i'm with you casey i i saw you take reed after i was like shoot he was still there i i, I would lead I, I you know i would definitely lead Jaden reed personally yeah um, I, I just i guess i just missed him while yeah, we're doing the draft it happens but, man yeah but uh the next pick man will it was this 205 right 205 yeah. will levis and so this is interesting right will levis physically imposing for a quarterback right six yeah. four two twenty nine dude looks like he's kind of on steroids like he, he veins are popping like he looks good dude he yeah. looks like uh, a, he looks like a, a big dog you, um, you put him in a white t-shirt and it rains you know <laughs> yeah, he gets yeah. uh you know he, he only played nine games his rookie season it is what it is we kind of we kind of expected that you know titans traded up they got him 33rd overall he was yeah, the second pick of the, of the, second, round. the second round yeah right yeah yeah he fell out of the round one um but you know what eight touchdowns four picks not you know didn't light the world on fire but he did the first game he played do you remember that four oh, sure. touchdowns and it was uh i think like I think DeAndre Hopkins had three of them. And we we're like, holy cow! Should Will Levis have been the first pick of the draft? <laughs> uh, but but you know, but then he showed you know the rest of the world like, just kidding. On um, Will Levis, I'm not you know not quite yeah. that good. But uh, I felt like in Superflex, the sure. value was appropriate here. Yeah, I thought I thought that was a great pick. I I, I had him on the radar there, but there was a couple guys I wanted to get. I, I questioned whether Levis or Reed there. You mm-hmm. know, Superflex R- Levis could read. Uh, Levis Levis absolutely could be skyrocket in value. They've, they've gave him a chance to succeed here. Hopefully they take uh, another offensive lineman or two. What we saw is the tools be exceptional for, uh, and the ceiling be exceptional potentially for, for Will Levis. Surround him with some talent and let's see what he can do. Uh, I think probably appropriately rated here, but it was definitely a question for me whether or not I would take Reed or Levis there. So um, 
Moving forward, I took Josh Downs with the next pick here. Thought, just think he's the next up in the value train of kind of what's going on. We'll see where the, the Colts land in the draft, who, who they take. Uh, but he, he showed you that he can get it done year one. Uh, Reggie Wayne's really high on on his boy Josh Downs. So we'll we'll see what comes of that. But showed that, you, that he could get open and that it wasn't the NFL wasn't really a problem for you. So. Um, he's kind of last man standing that I that I want to take a, a big you know a chance on wide receiver wise I think in this draft um, there's there's obviously a couple other good ones but he, he seems to have the best value currently out of all the receivers left I think is a better way to phrase that so I want Josh Downs there and I felt like there was a tear gap Casey right after this pick so uh, yeah I, I, I like the Downs pick I think there's a lot of good talent left but a, a question marks of you know, how they're getting their touches. Mm-hmm. Um, right. So uh, we hope, I hope Josh Downs, I say survives the NFL draft because, you know, like you mentioned, they may, they may go receiver. They may go Bowers. You know, it may take away targets from him. We'll see. But I, I, I like what we saw from, you know, the film statistics, Josh Downs, you know, his rookie rookie year was solid, but I'm here on the clock at the two is seven and I'm taking loose Luke Musgrave. Mm. So, Man, people don't realize how much he produced to, to start the season, right? He, he ended up getting hurt. I think it was week 12, right? He played he played 11 games. Let, let me pull it up. Yeah, uh, week week 11 was the final game that he played. Um, he, he showed up week 18, barely played at all. But, uh, man, he was uh, he, he was showing that he, he was definitely the tight end one in Green Bay over Tucker Craft. Right. His his numbers were, were by far and away better. Six, six, two fifty three. He's twenty three years old. Right. Uh, but but Luke Musgrave, he's and, and he was really close. There's another tight end that you're going to talk about shortly, Casey. They were very, very close for me. Uh, I, I ended up taking the quarterback, in my opinion, that I'm sorry. I ended up taking the tight end, in my opinion, that I just had the what the better quarterback at least right now like i trust jordan love so uh i i, I thought i thought he i think luke musgrave is in a very good situation and uh, I, yeah. I liked what i saw yeah i mean just again talking to the packers the ecosystem of how how they're getting their touches this isn't a guy who played a ton in college didn't didn't have a ton of college production i should say uh, but the the tools are mm-hmm. all there and you saw that on display unfortunately he got hurt right when you were really getting Jordan Love flourishing through the season and then kind of came back and played a couple of playoff games. But Kraft had kind of got in there and, and had, you know, a nice little run with with Jordan Love as well. But I love the pick there. Um, and I, I think uh, the next guy was was Michael Mayer for me. Um, still not ready to quit him. We'll, we'll see what happens yep. this year. But at the end, you know, good profile, good player. I think, you know, tight ends don't always hit the ground running. This may be the one case where everybody who was screaming from the mountaintops about how you could, well, we'll just buy those guys cheaper for later. You might be able to buy Mayer for, you know, a little cheaper later. But by the time you were drafted him, he was probably a second round pick anyway, in most cases. Um, so, and I don't, I don't know that, you know, there may be somebody out there that would give you, you trade you for a third because they want the re-roll because they're, you know, like we talked about before they're, they're, uh, Veruca salt from Willy Wonka there. They want their golden goose now. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, I'm, I'm still interested in, in taking a shot. The tools, the, the talent is all there and really the opportunity, uh, could really be there because they're not flush with playmakers per se over there in Vegas. And we'll see what they come up with in the in the draft with uh for quarterback wise because it seems like they'll be a player uh but if not worst case scenario you roll him with Gardner Minshew and um now he's not the biggest tight end targeter um but uh, you know it is what it is I'll, I'll I'll take the shot on on Mayer there Casey I almost took him I almost took him over Musgrave I was yeah. I was right there uh, I think he's a screaming buy yeah. I really think you know nobody cares about him right now you know he's kind of left for the wolves and it's like why not go take a stab why not throw like a mid third I, I i think you could go acquire michael mayer uh you know i i, I really liked him in college and I, I think that he's he's kind of undervalued right now so yeah. really good pick uh where are we at 209 is that right uh, yeah 9 10 11 12. yeah at the 209, I took Kendra Miller, man. Talk about someone who is forgotten. I mean, do you remember a year ago from today, the hype that Kendra Miller got? Or, or it, it, Sorry, right after the draft, right? Right after the draft, landing in New Orleans, everybody was all over him. 
right? People are people. Kamara man, was people suspended. Get, yes, yes, yes. That's a really good point. But uh, you know, here's what I'll say: like production is really important to me. Measurables, obviously, very important to me. Uh, landing spot it might be the least important thing to me, right? Because I think if you're a good player, you're going to find a way to produce and get on the field. Kendra Miller had 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns in 2022, his final year at TCU, uh, 5'11", 215, uh, you know, New Orleans Saints. Like, it, a lot a lot adds up. Uh, he's, he's, what, 21 years old. And, uh, you know, Kendra Miller, he, he's just, he's really, he checks a lot of boxes for me. The final week this season, RB 13, 73 rushing yards, a touchdown. Uh, just, oh, just, just something looked just, great just, out there. Too. Yeah. Just something to think about. Right. It yeah. was like just enough to be like, Ooh, am I back in on Kendra? Oh, I'm not. Oh. I never left. I'm all in. He, he's way down. He's, he's down at the bottom of the second when he was at the top of the second for me, maybe even the you know bottom of the first love Kendra Miller. Love the skill set. You got to see it in week 18. They made a bad signing with Jamal Williams. He shouldn't even be a factor. Yep. I, I w- wish they could get out of that faster. Um, but he has been a guy that I've been gobbling up. And another guy that, that's on this list that, uh, that that you picked is another guy I've been gobbling up all offseason. So Kendra Miller to the moon. Next pick for me, I went Charbonnet. We don't know what this next regime in, Seahaw- in Seattle is going to do as far as deploying the running backs. You know, could be a little bit more even split moving forward. But I think the talent's there. You know, draft capital at this point, you know, I don't know how much I care about it because it's a new regime, but I like the player. I like the talent a um, little bit higher draft uh, drafted player from last year in your rookie draft. So maintaining Charbonnet and, you know, has it probably some value to the Kenny Walker owner. And I think uh, could easily with an injury or with how they're um, the new offensive coordinator will will deploy them could have some standalone value. So I went I went Sharps there. And I just want to say one thing. Like I had an interesting approach. I think that Sharp is is the better running back than Kendra Miller. Ooh. I think he's the better player. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, Kendra Miller. I thought you were going to go Kenny Walker. No, 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 no. no. I think Sharp is is the better player than Kendra Miller. I took Miller. Maybe this isn't the right approach or the right process, I should say. But I took him because I trust that he could get, you know, maybe Kamara's out of town relatively soon or Ooh. something. I just feel like he has a clearer path to being the RB1 there, whereas I think Ooh. pretty high of Ken Walker. Yeah. And and while I do like Sharp, like Ken Walker's not going anywhere, man. He's going to be the one. So that that's kind of where, yeah. you know, that was my thought process. Yeah, maybe, it's it. not, maybe it's not the most logical, but... I, I could see that, where you're coming from. Yeah. It's probably, and, and if you look at it right now, the second, it's not the most logical, but I mean, things can change so fast. They owe Kamara a yeah. lot of money. Jamal Williams is a bad signing. Yep. Kendra, Kendra shows you that he could do it. Maybe, maybe they finagle something and, and all of a sudden, um, I think he, he is, he, he has leading man uh, features, Kendra. So I like it. All right. Who do you, who do you got at, at the second to last pick at 23 here? Yep. 23. I took Chase Brown. Uh, another guy that I've been considering now for like the past one or two picks. Oh, Chase Brown's interesting to me and, and, and I'll keep it quick, but you know, now that Joe Mixon is out of town in Cincinnati, uh, there's a few things I'll, I'll mention about Chase Brown. He, uh, he had one less 20 yard carry on 213 less attempts than Joe Mixon. He was first in yards per route run at 4.46 10th and breakaway yard percentage. Uh, you know, Joe Mixon, again, who had 309 touches. He's out of town. Uh, keep in mind, like Chase Brown runs a 4 4 3 40 time, 93rd percentile. Really explosive. Uh, he's uh, – and the final thing that I will mention about Chase Brown, man, for keep keep this in mind, Casey. Uh, third running back since 2011 to have a yards per route run rate over four while running 20-plus routes. Mm. Uh, just, just again, something something that crossed my mind. and uh, Strong stat there. Uh, like – Yes, Cincinnati did sign Zach Moss two years, eight million dollars. But uh, you know, Brown's final college season, he had almost nineteen hundred yards, thirteen touchdowns. Again, just just uh, at the end of the second, I'm I'm happy to take a stab there. You know. Yeah, no, I've, this, he's the other guy I've been buying up a lot of, and I, I like Chase Brown a lot, and he he has an opportunity, some paths, um, and he's an explosive player. Uh, a lot of those things you just mentioned kind of highlight some of that decent underrated pass catcher I thought coming out uh, so I really 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 like that pick for Chase Brown Kendra Miller Chase Brown were, were up in that you know Michael Mayer 
area, but I wanted to get Mayer in there with the tight end premium. So to wrap this draft up, I took Quentin Johnston here at 24. I know some people might not like that, but I mean, got got some draft capital. The the um, Chargers have gone away and traded Mike Williams away and traded away um, Keenan Allen. Um, not saying that that's going to, you know, they, they certainly could draft some guys, but I think the approach that you might see from them is either offensive line in that first pick or trade back, grab some more players, offensive line. Maybe they draft another wide receiver. But, you know, if you look at Jim Harbaugh's whole track record and career, you go back to Sam Fran, you know, it was guys like Crabtree out there, not not some, you know, not 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 an emphasis on crazy, ridiculous wide receivers. You go to the whole time at Michigan, you know, there, there were he didn't one that wasn't the emphasis of guy. He wasn't putting these crazy wide receivers out on the field like he he, he get, gets it done with, you know, a certain style of guys. Is Quentin Johnson that guy? I have no idea. Um, I think that the, the talent and the tools are why I was interested in Quentin Johnson. Didn't want him to play as much as he had to last year. Um now you probably want a little more of that out of your first round pick. Uh, but I thought there were times where he could get open. He made some bonehead plays. Uh, but I think if he can catch an opportunity and, and right now it's him and Josh Palmer basically on that on that list. And we'll see what guys end up there. It could be neighbors at five, but it could be, you know, another third, fourth round wide receiver that he's competing with. And, and maybe he wins that job. But I think he's still worth uh, taking a shot on here. Um, and I took him over Marvin Mims and and Michael Wilson and and Wicks um, and Mingo, you know. So I just you know felt like there's reason for the disrespect, but you know people are are quick to quick to quit, and we we pushed him down far enough. So I wanted to get Quentin Johnson in the back end of this thing, and I I still be you know I think right now you're you're seeing we're seeing him in. Oh, say the, let's see here, 14 4. So 14th round of your startup. I'll take the shot on Quentin Johnston mm-hmm. still. Um, I'm not, I'm not out, out. Um, but, you know, you, you saw a huge depreciation in the asset. So, uh, but I think he could, you know, he could end up playing a pivotal role for them, uh, you know, moving forward and, and, and surprise some people. So I, I took QJ there. What are your thoughts wrapping us up? Get us out of here, uh, Austin. Uh, man, it's uh, it's wild how much changes in a year, Casey. You know, yeah. we spend all off season. We sit there. We think we know it all, and we have all you know. Take lock. We, we just we're so set in our opinions, our thoughts, and then we look back twelve months later. It's like, dude, Poka <laughs> Nakua neck and neck with like, you know, Garrett Wilson. Some of the in best rankings? in the gate. Like, yeah. Like, dude, what? And it's just, I, I guess. Well, yeah. The point I'm getting at is, man, so much is going to change. So. When you're watching this video now, let's. I kind of want to go watch this a year from today and just be like, man, I'm so stupid. I was wrong about this, 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 and this. So it's it. it that's what it makes it fun, man. Right. Because you just you never know. You could spend all off season like a sicko psychopath, like both of us, and just still be wrong about so much. So it is what it is, man. But this has been fun, man. I'm excited to do uh, two weeks. Two weeks from today, the NFL draft. Two so weeks. Let's go, man. Yeah. So yeah, appreciate you tuning in. Be sure to go follow Austin at Austin Abbott, two B's, two T's, two F's on the Twitters. He's crushing it over there. He's got a lot of good information for you and who I'm sure he will be abreast of all the situations uh, during the NFL draft. You can come follow us at the FF dynasty. You can hit us up on the Patreon. We got a discord. We get three extra episodes a, uh, uh, a month with that and a whole bunch of other stuff, access to all this ADP that we're talking about. I got rookie rankings that are, will be over there before the draft starts and then updated. Once the draft is over, we got other rankings, uh, that will, will update when the draft is over. Uh, so lots of stuff going on over there. We got player pages and all that jazz, uh, getting ready to drop sometime around draft time. So fun, good stuff, uh, over there. Make sure you check out Austin. This was a lot of fun. Good, good way to revisit. Um, and, and good way to, uh, you know, not have to talk exclusively rookies uh, at this point where where, you know, we're, we're going to get a, a little bit different opinion once we get another piece of the puzzle. So uh, always good to revisit, always good to um, see what's going on and, and, and see how much, it, you know, that you, you stated so well that what what changes in the year. So, uh, Austin, you got any final word before we depart? Oh, man, I got to get to bed, brother. I got to me got, too. I gotta gotta get some rest, man. This has been good though. Yeah. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, looking Austin, forward to the next one, man. Austin did leg day today, so he's gonna wake up tomorrow with some <laughs> shaky legs. <laughs> yeah, those lunges got me, that's for sure, man. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>